Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, Amy here. Today we are gonna talk about the October new releases for 2021, I am super excited. Um, there was a lot of things that really caught my eye, and of course there are, I'm sure, once again, I say this in all these videos, that I'm sure I missed something. But yeah, these are just the ones that have caught my eye, uh, and most of them are mystery thriller uh, horror. Uh, there was only like a little handful of male male romances that are being released that um, that have caught my eye anyway. But first off, I'm going to talk about one that's actually being released, well, or was released. Uh, the day I'm filming this, it will be released tomorrow, which is September 30th. Um, and that is Wrath by Ella James. I have been waiting for this book. Bella's having dinner <laughs> right now, so if you hear a little click and sound that's just her bowl but anyway um i have been looking forward to this book since i read the last book in the on my new on my knees duet or should i say trilogy because it ended up to be three books instead of two um from ella james absolutely loved that series or trilogy uh go check it out if you have not read it but this character was introduced in that book and we we were kind of left hanging about this character. We don't we didn't really get a name. I don't really remember getting a name anyway because I remember thinking, oh, we're not going to hear any more about this character. But little did I know that her next book was going to be all about him. Now this book is actually in a series as well. It's it's part of her uh, Sinful Secrets series, and it's number four in in that category in that series but this is i believe the only male male romance in that series it can be read standalone it says his name is josh miller this guy is relentless all-american baby-faced blue-eyed band dark who's not a band dark at all because you can't be a dark when you're getting scouted to pay to play college soccer so the guy speaking in the synopsis is actually his stepbrother uh and from what I gather, they're going to be falling for each other. So I am all about it. It says, Wrath is an emotional, forbidden male-male romance that will be the fourth standalone in the best-selling Sinful Secrets collection, where each book is inspired by a sin and centered on devastating secrets. So if you want to go back and read the other books in this series, go ahead. But uh, this is the only male-male romance. But it comes out on September 30th. Um, the reason I'm talking about it now is because I had it written down for coming out in October and then all of a sudden I saw on her Instagram just like a couple days ago that the release date was September 30th. So I don't know if it just changed, it moved up, I'm not sure, maybe, maybe I saw October and really it was in October, I, who knows, but I had it written down in October but here we are, it's going to be released on September 30th and I am ecstatic. Lots of books being released on October 5th, so of course we'll jump into those next. So the first one we're going to talk about is Last Girl Ghosted. This is by Lisa Unger. Once again, it comes out on October 5th. I'm really excited about this book. I just finished Confessions on the 745 and loved it. Uh, so I'm looking very forward to, to what this one has in store for us. It says secrets, obsession, and vengeance converge in this riveting thriller about an online dating match turned deadly cat and mouse game. That's all we need to know. I'm not going to read into it any further. Uh, I definitely want to go into this blind, um, but we know it's going to be about online dating and getting ghosted. Another book coming out on October 5th. This is The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. I wasn't sure about this book when I first heard about it. I heard about it from Books and Lala. This is going to be one of her book club picks. I don't remember if it's, it's either October or November. I, I don't, I don't remember, but anyway, um, it just didn't, it didn't, uh, it didn't draw me in for some reason when I first looked at it. And then when I was going through new releases for October and things like that, I ran across it again and I was like, I'm just so intrigued by this cover. Let me fully read the synopsis, although, you know, sometimes you shouldn't, but I did, and I was like, okay, okay, okay. 
let's do this. Let's, let's maybe give this a shot. So I'll just read you a little bit about it. It says practical, unassuming Jane Shoringfield has done the calculations and decided that the most secure path forward is this a husband in a marriage of convenience who will allow her to remain independent and occupied with meaningful work. So she finds her choice of marriage in a dashing but reclusive doctor, Augustine Lawrence. On one condition will he marry her, um, that she must never visit Landridge Hall, which is his cr crumbling uh, manor, crumbling family manor outside of town is what, what it says. But yet, on their wedding night, an accident strands her at his door in a pitch black rainstorm and she finds him changed. Gone is the bold, courageous surgeon and in his place is a terrified, paranoid man. One who cannot tell reality from nightmare and fears Jane is an apparition come to haunt him. So, we're not going to read any more from there. I don't know what that means. I don't know if maybe this house is haunted and weird things are happening if you're in this house or I don't know but I'm I'm here for it. <laughs> Another October 5th release is Nanny Needed. This is by Georgina Cross. Uh, this gave me Turn of the Key vibes uh, so I definitely put it on my list. So we have a young girl uh, who's kind of at a dead-end job. Uh, she sees an, an ad on a, billboard, on a billboard, I believe it is, um, about a nanny position that's going to add many zeros to her income. So she goes in for the interview and she gets it. It says, a young woman takes a job as a nanny for an impossibly wealthy family, thinking she's found her entree into a better life, only to discover instead she's walked into a world of deception and dark secrets. It's in a glamorous penthouse apartment on the Upper West Side of NYC. Goes on to say a few more things and then it says, Why does the beautiful Mrs. Bird never leave the apartment alone? And what happened to the nanny before her? It's too late for Sarah to seek help. After all, discretion is of the utmost importance. I kind of skipped around the synopsis a little bit, um, but it definitely gave me turn to key vibes, so it, it's on the list. Another October 5th release is Cackle. This is by Rachel Harrison. The cover totally drew me in. I'm not gonna lie. Love, love, love the cover. Uh, this is considered to be on the side of horror. Um, so I'm super excited about that. It says, all her life, Annie has played into nice and safe. After being unceremoniously dumped by her longtime boyfriend, Annie seeks a fresh start. She accepts a teaching position that moves her from Manhattan to a small village upstate. She's stunned by how perfect and picturesque the town is. Then Annie meets Sophie, beautiful, charming, magnetic Sophie, who takes a special interest in Annie and who wants to be her friend. Sophie's appearance is uncanny and ageless. Her mansion in the middle of the woods feels a little unearthly, and she does seem to wield a certain power. And lastly, on October 5th, this is Reprieve. This is by James Han Matson. Uh, this is another horror um, that just kind of caught my eye. It, it gave me, um, like, not necessarily haunted house, but like going through a haunted house, you know, like during, you know, you know, for shits and giggles kind of thing. It says, a chilling and blisteringly revelant literary novel of social horror centered around a brutal killing that takes place in a full contact haunted escape room. So it's a haunted escape room. That's why it kind of gave me like haunted house vibes, like, you know, like going through a haunted house. On April 27th, 1997, so we're going back to the 90s slasher film style, uh, four contestants make it to the final sale of the Quigley House, a full contact haunted escape room in Lincoln, Nebraska, made famous of its monstrosities, booby traps, and ghoulishly costumed actors. If the group can endure these horrors without shouting the safe word, reprieve, they'll win a substantial cash prize. But before they can complete the challenge, a man breaks into the sale and kills one of the contestants. 
We're not gonna read any more into it because I kinda wanna go into this one blind, but at the end it just says, an astonishingly soulful exploration of complicity and masquerade. Reprieve combines the psychological tension of classic horror with searing social criticism to present an unsettling portrait of this tangled American life. Moving on to October 6th, we have one male male romance coming out. Um, well, I'm sure there's other ones maybe coming out on October 6th, but anyway, this is the one that caught my eye. This is Punk Drills and Quick Thrills by Eden Finley and Saxon James. I'm a little late to the party because this is book five of the C of the CU Hockey series. Um, so I need to maybe go back. Um, I don't know if it can be read as a standalone. It doesn't really say but I just really got into the synopsis. And of course, I'm always a sucker for a sports male-male romance. It's like one of my favorite genres, or subgenres, I guess. So we have Wesley and Jasper. Uh, Wesley speaks to us saying, the fall from NHL superstar to domestic disaster was swift and painful. When I became the legal guardian of my five younger siblings, I had no idea what I was doing. One year later, I'm still lost. Coaching CU's hockey team might be the only thing I'm excellent at. But when our star forward is failing math, I have to do what it takes to keep him on the team. Even if it's going head-to-head -head with Jasper Eckstein. One minute I'm confronting the notorious hockey-hating professor, and the next I'm agreeing to be his date to his 20-year high school reunion. And then we have Jasper. My rules are simple. I don't get extra credit. I don't give extra credit ever. No matter how entitled jocks think they are, I refuse to give them special treatment. It's not because I hate them. It's not because of a hockey player broke my nose in high school. It's fair. But when Wesley Dalton bursts into my office like a hurricane, all my principles fly out the window. Suddenly, I'm giving extra credit and I have a date for my reunion. So we have a, a coach to the hockey team and then we have the professor. Um, so, so yeah, it just sounded really, um, I don't know, it drew me in, but I have not read anything else in this series. So I may go back on this one to check things out and make sure I'm not missing anything. But this one comes out October 6th. Okay, coming out on October 8th, this is another male-male romance uh, sort of deal. This is Freshman Fantasies Straight to Gay First Time by Nathan Bay. Uh, so once again, the cover got me. Two beautiful guys on the cover and then Straight to Gay. Once again, uh, another one of my favorite sub-genres in the male male romance. So this is volume one. So this is um, a couple short stories in the book. The first one is Bros with Benefits. A thunderstorm brings together a gay college freshman Alejandro and his straight jock roommate Hayden for a night of exploration that will make your mouth water. Then we have the jockstrap thief. 19-year-old Bryce loves stealing dirty jock straps from football players in the locker in the locker room. <laughs> that's that's kind of gross, but uh, anyway, um, when Coach Willis catches him, the submissive student offers a trade for the dominant alpha to keep his secret. <laughs> this should be fun. And then we have sweet release. After hot-headed Frank clashes with his next-door neighbor, Devin. A sweet turn of events unlocks a delicious self-awakening. And then goes on to say, if you enjoy male male stories with friends to lovers or older and younger men with an age gap, this is the book for you. Each pulse pounding tale is just the right length for a sexy bedtime story. A happy ending is guaranteed. We'll check it out. Okay, on October 12th, we have one that I've been really looking forward to since I've heard we are going to have a sequel. This is Aristotle and Dante, Dive Into the Waters of the World. This is number two. Uh, this is by Benjamin Alir Sainz. I don't know how to, I probably butchered that. And I am so sorry, but I really, really enjoyed the first book. Um, it was uh, just sort of a coming of age story of two friends. Um, one was openly gay, one was kind of coming into himself, trying to figure out himself. 
uh, and they they sort of get they move apart somewhere in the book uh, but they continue to stay friends and of course events happen where they come back together in the book but I remember thinking oh I want more I want more of these guys I want to know what happens after you know so here we are we're getting it uh, so I cannot wait to dive into this one this one comes out October 12th it says now they must discover what it means to stay in love and build a relationship in a world that seems to challenge their very existence I know I cried like a baby in the first one I have a feeling it's gonna be just the same in this next one another male male romance this one's coming out on October 26 this is Hostile Takeover by Lucy Lennox. I was ready for a good standalone by uh, Lucy Lennox, um, so this one caught my eye, of course. It says, it was supposed to be a prank, a silly frat boy dare, one hot moment in a hidden storage closet, one kiss, no consequences. But if you get that close to a man with fire in his eyes, you're gonna get burned, and I was no exception. One taste of gray black wood ruined me for life. The way Gray sees it, I was the one who did the ruining. I humiliated him, wrecked his life, destroyed his future. Doesn't matter that he's clawed his way back and then some. Doesn't matter that he's already top of the Wall Street food chain. The man's ruthless, heartless, and he likes his revenge served cold. Now he's taken down the companies owned by every frat boy who did him wrong. A hate to lovers kind of story? I don't know. We'll, we'll definitely check it out. Another October 26th release, the cover drew me in on this one. This is These Silent Woods. This is by Kimmy Cunningham Grant. It says, a father and daughter living in the remote Appalachian Mountains must reckon with the ghost of their past in this mesmerizing novel of suspense. No electricity, no family, no connection to the outside world. For eight years, Cooper and his young daughter, Finch, have lived in isolation in a remote cabin in the northern Appalachian woods and that's exactly the way Cooper wants it because he's got a lot to hide. I don't want to read too much into this book. Um, These, Silence Wood These Silent Woods is a poignant story of survival, sacrifice, and how far a father will go when faced with losing it all. So we have an isolated cabin in an isolated area um, we also, it also kind of mentions that they have a friend that, um, brings them, you know, like resources, food, whatever, uh, they may need, and then one day he doesn't show up. So we're going to leave it at that. Another October 26th release, this is Where They Wait by Scott Carson. Uh, recently laid off from his newspaper and desperate for work, war correspondent Nick Bishop takes a humbling job, writing a profile of a new mindfulness app called Clarity. It's easy money and a chance to return to his hometown for his first visit in years. The app itself seems like a retread of old ideas, relaxing white noise and guided meditations. But then there are the sleep songs. A woman's hauntingly beautiful voice sings a ballad that is anything but soothing. It's disturbing more of a warning than a relax relaxation, but it works. Deep, ref deep refreshing sleep follows, but so do nightmares, vivid and chilling. They feature a dead woman who calls Nick by name and whispers guidance. No one involved with Clarity has any interest in his article. Their interest is in him, because while he might not have any memory of it, he's one of the 20 people who have heard this sinister, sinister song and the only one who is still alive. Okay, another October 26th. Uh, this is another horror novel. This is Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine M. Valen Valen Valente. Might be, I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, the cover, once again, kind of caught me. Sophia was made for him, her perfect husband. She can feel it in her bones. He is perfect. Their home together in Arcadia Gardens is perfect. Everything is perfect. Nothing's ever perfect. It's just that he's away so much and so often. He works so hard and she misses him so much. And he says he misses her too. But sometimes Sophie wonders about things, strange things, dark things. The look on her husband's face when he comes back from a long business trip. The questions he will not answer. The locked basement she, will, she is never allowed to enter. And whenever she asks the neighbors, they can't quite meet her gaze. But everything is perfect, isn't it? 
And then lastly, coming out on October 29th, this is another male male romance. This is The Bromance Zone by Lauren Blakely. Her covers are always so beautiful, y'all. These beautiful men, goodness gracious. Um, I have been enjoying Lauren Blakely's male male romances so much. Like, it's just an auto read for me. And I want these books in my hand because they are beautiful. It says, two great friends, one road trip and eight inches of snow that night at the cabin, that is. <laughs> it says the bromance zone is a deliciously flirty, red hot sexy, friends to lovers, male male romance about the charming guy next door who's sworn to never date a friend, the flirty hot nerd who's been secretly crushing on that friend forever, and one night snowed in a cabin. This book comes fully equipped for your reading pleasure with sexy banter, a super awkward dinner party, and a scene in front of a fireplace that proves just how dangerous the friend zone is. I can't wait. Like I said, I've been loving uh, Lauren Blakely's male male romances, and she's got she's got some good ones coming out too for 2022. Did I say that right? 20. 22. That's <laughs> that's weird to say, but it's upon us, y'all. It is upon us. So that is it for my um, new releases that have, you know, just caught my eye that I'm interested in. But I really enjoy doing these because I really look forward to, to see what's coming up in the, the next months. So I hope y'all are all doing well out there. As always, hugs from me all around, y'all. And I will see you in my next video. Bye, y'all.